Hi, George here. I'm painting at the Pear Tree Cafe in Battersea Park. I'm using oil paint on a gesso primed board. I start by dividing the board vertically and horizontally. This helps me design my composition by considering where to place the focal points of the painting. It also helps me position the objects in the scene by checking what they line up with vertically and horizontally. I paint the under sketch using thinned down raw amber paint. I then paint the sky. The sky is usually the lightest area of a landscape painting. Whilst painting this, it's important to remember that the value shifts between the light and the dark clouds are not actually very big in comparison to those in the overall scene. For example, if you squint at the scene, the sky tends to appear as one light value. Once this is painted, I use this as a tool to check how the other values in the scene relate to it. I paint the group on the bench as a priority, as I don't know how long they'll be there for. I find painting people into a scene really gives the painting a sense of life. It also helps create a sense of scale. When painting people, especially on location, it's important not to get too caught up in the smaller details. I mix one colour for the light flesh tone and one colour for the shadow tone. I don't paint the small details like the eyes, the eyebrows or the lips. I keep these as general shadow shapes. Painting these small details would take quite a bit of time and as the people aren't very close to me, that amount of detail may look a bit distracting. When painting trees, it's very important to think of the overall shape of the tree and do not try and paint every leaf. One, it's going to look distracting and two, it's going to take you forever. It helps a lot to squint at trees as this compresses the values so all those leaves aren't so obvious. Especially as these trees are in the background, it really helps to underplay the details. When painting things that are in the distance, in order to avoid the painting from looking flat, it helps to decrease the contrast, make the colours less chromatic, in other words, make the colours duller and less saturated, and make the edges softer. All of these things will add depth to the painting. When I mix the paint, I try and mix the correct colour and value on the palette before I put the paint on the canvas. This way, you have much more control over the colour of the paint. If you try to mix the paint directly on the canvas, it can create a muddy effect as the paint can mix with the paint underneath and will most likely not create the colour that you are aiming for. As soon as I finish painting the reflection on the lake, this group of children come over to me. They're fascinated to see me painting. Although the children don't speak English, they made it clear to me that they want to be painted into the scene. They speak both French and Spanish. Despite learning French at school, my Spanish is a lot better, or not as terrible as my French. This is mainly because I speak Portuguese. so. I could yeah, talk to them a bit and we could sort of understand each other. I explained to them that I'm not able to paint all of them in the scene and that I only have space to paint one person. The little blonde girl is the most adamant to be painted, so she agrees to pose for me whilst her friends sit opposite her on the bench. I actually feel that having her in the foreground really adds some much needed visual interest to help balance out the composition and of course made her very happy.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And you can also follow me on Instagram to keep up with my artwork.